Uh, what's up guys, Mr. Tryhard here, and I got a gameplay of Domination for you guys on Array. This is not my gameplay, this is a guy named D Smoothie TM, who actually submitted this gameplay for the Beast Moon Monday series, because he said that this was a Beast gameplay of his, and that he was, you know, playing the objective, and a great score. But actually, I watched it, and um, this gameplay is very, very good overall, and he plays the objective like a champ, no doubt about it. But since it's a whole gameplay and it's like nine and a half minutes long, I feel that the Beast Mode Monday series should be a little bit shorter. So I decided to feature it on my, you know, usual long commentaries, you know, the usual commentaries on a Thursday because, hey, I had no gameplay. Oh, no, wait, that's that's not true at all. I, I have gameplay. I'm just too lazy to fucking go back and record it. I feel since the beginning of Black Ops, since we don't have to use PVRs anymore, since we can just play and then whenever we feel a game is good, we just save it to our file share and then go back and record that. Um, I feel I've been getting lazy because I have to turn, you know, turn on my Xbox, turn on my PVR, sit there for 10 minutes and record, like, the whole thing, and then go back, and I don't know. I guess I'm just getting lazy. I, I should probably go back to live recording again because that made it so much easier. But anyways, uh, enjoy this gameplay from D-Smoothie. His uh, link is going to be down below. Go click on that stuff because he gets an awesome, awesome score. He goes flawless in this map, and he gets the most caps and the most defense of his team, and I think of the whole game, so... So great gameplay by D Smoothie. Shout out to you. You're a you're a cool cat, my friend. So I got this topic for you guys today, and I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit more about myself. But it's not gonna be you know as personal as my other ones. Uh, this one's gonna be a, ho a whole lot more on the upside. So today's gonna be cars. Um, if you guys saw my well, if you guys saw my setup video, then you guys probably know that I'm into cars. You know, I, I showed you guys um, one or two cars in there, and. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of cars. Before I, I actually started doing YouTube videos, I was big into the car tuning scene. Um, and I still own, to this day, a car tuning shop, which is, you know, just, it's like a small shop where, you know, people come and they buy tuning parts, like, you know, rims and, and you know, tires, subwoofers, you know, stuff like that, turbos, engines, and whatnot. And uh, I was big into that. I, I I actually got a few cars that I tuned and modified and and had fun with. And it's a really really expensive hobby. If uh, habit, if uh, you guys, I'm actually looking for the word hobby. <laughs> yeah, it's a really expensive hobby. Um, if if you guys have have never like shopped for parts like those, uh, like you can get into some serious debt if you start tuning sh uh, tuning cars. Um, I have one car that uh, wasn't actually featured on my. Uh, set setup video that I probably will do a vlog about if you guys want to see it. Um, it's it's my baby. It's it's the only car that I kept. Um, when I when I decided to stop tuning, cause um, you usually do it at a pretty young age. You know, when I started, I was like 17 or 18, and I modified you know vehicles until I got to the age of I don't know maybe 22 or 23 years old. At that point, I decided that I you know I wanted to you know get a house and you know start paying for that kind of stuff and and whatnot. So. So, you know, tuning cars was kind of a, I don't know, maybe like a stupid habit. So I decided to, to stop, sell everything. But I, I, I kept one car. It's a, well, for those of you who don't know, it's a 1989 Nissan Skyline. It, it's the old model. It's it's the uh, models that you ordered from Japan. And I, I actually ordered that one myself. Um, here in Quebec, the way it worked was you had brokers who would uh, order uh, cars from Japan for you. And there was a bunch of laws you had to pass. Like, you had to pass inspection, like federal inspection, provincial in inspection. You had to modify a bunch of shit. And you, it ended up costing you, like, two times the price of the actual car. So I decided to just do it myself and order from Japan, which means, you know, getting in touch with, you know, Japanese people straight up who speak like bad English and I suck at English too so it was my bad English versus their bad English which meant for some hard like really hard communication and it was just terrible basically so what what you had to do what you had, like you, you had to send like thousands and thousands of dollars to you know overseas Japanese accounts and hope for the best, like hope that they will actually send you a car in like two or three months because the cars like they have to come on a boat uh, like they ship through a container from Japan to Vancouver and then once they get to Vancouver they get unloaded to trains that drive you to Montreal or to wherever you're from in, in uh, North America and um, man that can take like two months and then once your car gets here you have to get it you know modified so that it can fit the the actual you know laws that are from your own you know province state or whatever you live 
And man, that 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 is like the worst two months of your life because you've sent you know tens of thousands of dollars overseas, and you're just waiting for a car. And once the cars actually show up, you're fucking you're jizzing in your pants because, um, like okay, we are a country of I don't know how many million people live in my country uh, in my uh, province, but I I can tell you that there are probably a hundred cars like mine in this province. So uh, and I I actually put a lot of money into that stuff and modified it, and it, it's a beast. It 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 um it'll outrun, you know, some really really expensive cars. So uh, you know, maybe I'll do a vlog of that if you guys are interested. You know, just let me know in the comment section if you guys are into cars or into you know the Fast and the Furious type shit because that's what I got. Um, I kept it. I probably should have sell it, but I mean, cars like that. If you guys don't know, um, you only you only get five percent return on your investment, which means uh, let's just give an example. If the car is worth five thousand dollars. All right, now let's put them uh, ten, ten thousand. Yeah, if if it's worth ten thousand dollars, and you put, uh, you you invest uh one thousand in parts and shit like you know tires and radio system, you know stuff like that. Um, if you invest one thousand, then you can sell your car ten thousand one hundred. So it's ten percent return on on investment. Um, so if you invest ten thousand, then you can only sell your car one thousand more. So you lose you lose ninety percent of what you invest in. So when I like when it was time for me to sell my car, I I actually just told myself, you know what? If I sell it, I'm gonna lose so much money. So I just better just keep it, as you know, kind of a, just a souvenir. Cause, man, you 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 get attached to those things so much. Like, um, I'm I'm attached to my YouTube channel just as much as I am now, uh, as I was to my uh, to my car, man. Because, uh, it, it's your thing. Like you get up every morning. You just you 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 want to wash your car like you don't use your car every single day you know it's one of those cars that you bring out only on weekends like every single weekend like on Friday nights I would get together with my group of friends we'd, we'd like they would bring their car to my garage and we would like get a couple beers or order a couple pizza and like wash our cars and when I mean wash our cars it's not like you go like wash your car at like this you know sh whatever place because we we have spots where you wash your cars like washing like automated machines where you like like your car goes through a bunch of like i don't know what it is but anyways like like we we would take literally like three or four hours to wash each and every single car because we like we were having it like spot free it was so damn clean that like you would have to take your shoes off when you were done and then, and then like the very next day we would like ride in like we, like we would be bare we would ride barefoot to uh to the actual show like maybe like an hour and away and then for the whole weekend we would show our cars at like uh, expositions and people would you know pay to come see us and talk about our cars and go take a look and then at, at the end of the weekend there would be prizes and shit and I, I got a bunch of thro of uh, trophies trophies <laughs> from uh, from from that day and it was so fun because every single weekend we would ride to a different spot like away from home and we would sleep in hotels and we would you know party every weekend but it was such an expensive habit like every single weekend would cost me like five hundred dollars so you know, I would basically, you know, blow all my money on that shit. But anyways, what do you want, right? I mean, everybody does some crazy shit in life. You know, when when I was young, some of my friends did, you know, alcohol and drugs. And, well, I just did alcohol and cars. And, and I had so much fun. And still to this day, I mean, I, I still have, like, the tuning shop. And it still runs, like, six months a year on, um like, during, during the summertime. And it's uh, it's a pretty successful business. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. It's a small business. I, I don't intend to make a living out of it. I just intend to have it for fun. And I get parts are really really cheap too so <laughs> i guess that's mainly why i keep it because <laughs> there would be no reason for me to do otherwise anyways because i mean it's not a business that makes very much money so i mean well you can't always want to make money in life so you gotta have fun sometimes so anyways i got some other endeavors in mind but don't want to talk about that right now so the game's wrapping up man so if, if you guys have noticed he this d smoothie kid hasn't died yet so <laughs> he pulls a flawless 42 and oh i think his score is let's Watch this, Smith can pull a scoreboard. Here. Yeah, 42 and 0, 4 caps, 5 defense. Good for you, buddy. Go check his channel out. Alright, gotta go. See ya. Bye. Love ya. Bye.